In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this VFX flag advertisement animation all inside Blender. And if you want to download the project file for this, just click the link in the description below. If you want to skip to the flag animation creation in the description box below, click the relevant timestamp. Let's get into the tutorial. So I've opened up Blender, go into the motion tracking tab. I'm going to click and drag my footage into this area here. Nice. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on set scene frames. So we get the first frame and the last frame of the clip. Then I'm going to click on prefetch just to load the clip into RAM so that it plays back really smooth. Then if we go over to motion model, let me just open up here. If we go to motion model, I'm going to change this from location to perspective. And next to match, I'm going to change keyframe to previous frame. I'm going to leave pre-pass and I'm going to select normalize. Once that's done, make sure you are on frame one. Then I'm going to select detect features. I'm going to click on this 12 down button to open up the tab. I'm going to change the distance to 100. Lovely. Then I'm going to press control T to track forwards. Perfect. Once that's done, I'm going to go into the solve tab. I'm going to select focal length, optical center and radial distortion. Then I'm going to change the keyframe A and B to... You want to make sure that in between both keyframes, there is the most movement or parallax within the shot to help get a better solve error. So I'm going to say frame 41 to, to 220. So 41, tab 220, enter. And I'm going to click on solve camera motion and we have a solve error of 0.39 pixels. It's almost too good to be true. What I'm going to do next is making sure all my tracks are highlighted. I'm going to press control L to lock them so that when I select them, they don't move and we don't cause any errors. I'm going to zoom in a bit and I want to put the flag in this middle bit right here. I'm going to select three tracks to be the floor. So I'm going to select this one. I'm going to hold shift, select this one and select this one whilst holding shift. And I'm going to select floor and I want this one to be my origin. So I'm going to select it and then I'm going to click on origin, set origin. Then I'm going to click on set background and then click on set up tracking scene. Once that's done, I'm going to go back into my layout and I'm going to press num pad zero on my keyboard to look through the camera. I'm going to go to frame one and I just want to check that the track is solid. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So what we have here is our orientation is all messed up and I want to fix that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the camera and I'm going to come up to here. I'm going to select this, select 3D cursor. Now I'm just going to orient my scene using the rotation tools to a point where I have the plane kind of in the middle and that the human figure is facing up correctly. Yep, I'm happy with that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select the plane. I'm going to make it a bit smaller. So I'm going to press S, make it a bit smaller. I'm going to select the human being and the mesh plane. I'm going to press G and X just to move it into the middle right here where I want the pole to be. And I'm just going to check my track to see that it's tracking properly. It's always good every now and again when you're in a project file and you're camera tracking, you're putting something in the shot just to check that the track is not slipping when you move the object away from the origin point. The next thing I'm going to do is create a pole. So I'm going to select this, get rid of this human right here, get rid of him. And I'm going to press Shift A, Mesh. I'm going to create a cylinder. And I'm just going to come out of the camera view and I'm going to scale this down. I'm going to hop into edit mode. I'm going to select this face. I'm going to press Shift S and select Origin to Cursor. I'm going to hop back into Object Mode. I'm going to press Alt G on my keyboard and I'm going to press S to scale it down and Shift Z to make it thinner. Perfect. I'm just going to move over to this plane because I know that's where I want the flag to be. And I'm going to make this longer. Go back into Edit Mode, select the top face scroll out and I'm just going to move this up like so. I'm going to hop back into camera mode just to check that the pole is not long. That's not long enough. I'm going to make it a bit longer. Select the face, press G and Z and that should be fine. Back into object mode. We go back into camera mode. Yep, that's fine. I'm happy with that. Next, we're going to create the flag. So in order to do that, I'm going to press Shift A, Mesh and select Plane. And I only want the plane to be visible. So I'm going to select backslash while the plane is selected. I'm going to press the tilde key to bring up the pie menu of views, then change it to top view. Then I'm going to press S for scale, then shift X to scale on the X axis only, making a rectangular shape. I'm holding control as I increase the scale so that it snaps in increments. 
Yep, that's fine. I'm happy with that. Then I'm going to press Control A and apply the scale. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hop back into edit mode. I'm going to make sure my plane is selected. I'm going to press Control R to add a loop cut. And I'm going to click and I'm going to press Enter. Then I'm going to right click, making sure the plane is selected. Select subdivide. I'm going to set the subdivisions to 35. Perfect. Now with this being selected, I want to rotate it 90 degrees. So that is sitting up. So I'm going to press R, X, 90, Enter. Yep, that's perfect for me. Then I'm going to go into vertex mode and I'm going to select all the vertices to on the left. Like so, they're all selected. Then I'm going to go into data under vertex group. I'm going to press plus and I'm going to click assign and I'm just going to change the name of this vertex group to flag pin. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into object mode. I'm going to head over to physics. I'm going to select cloth. I'm going to scroll down to shape and I'm going to click on pin group and I'm going to select flag pin and then I'm going to scroll down to collisions and select self collisions. So when I press play, the flag drops and that's exactly what we want. Next, making sure that I'm on frame one, I'm going to add two wind force. So I'm going to press shift A, come over to force field, select wind, rotate this wind so that it's facing this way and I'm going to move it just to the left of the flag. I'm going to increase the scale. That's about right. And then I'm going to set the strength to 5000. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to select the plane. I'm going to right click. I'm going to click on shade smooth and then I'm going to press shift A. I'm going to add another wind force at the bottom. Just going to drag this down to the bottom. I'm going to increase the scale and I'm going to set the strength to 1000 and I'll press play. See how that looks. That looks okay for now. Obviously you can tweak the wind strength and the angle of the wind to get the flag to exactly how you want it to look. It might take a bit of time, but it's worth it. If you just tweak the settings. Next, what I'm gonna do is go to edit preferences, go into get extensions, click on search, type in MDD, and you wanna install this new tech MDD format. Once you've installed that, make sure the flag selected, that's important. Go over to file, click on export, and select lightwavepointcache.mdd. Once you've selected that, save this to somewhere on your computer, click export MDD. Once you've exported that, now we can delete the wind. We don't need that. We don't need this. And I'm gonna delete the cloth animation with it. And I'm just gonna bring up everything else. And so what I'm gonna do now is I am going to select my flag, click on modifiers, click add modifier, click on search, type in cache and select mesh cache. Now, if you go into the modifiers under file path, I'm gonna select, I'm gonna open up a file path and then just navigate to where you exported your MDD file. So in my case, .mdd file, accept. And now when I press play, we have our flag animation, but this time we can move it around, scale it up, we can rotate it and the animation will still proceed, which is kind of brilliant. This is, that's the reason why I've done it. So I'm just going to scale this down and I'm going to hop into my camera I press play. So what I need to do now is I need to scale it down and I need to rotate it so that it fits within the pole. So I'm just going to do that. I move the flag so it's intersecting with a pole, which is good. So if I was to go back into my camera mode and press play, yeah, that's perfect. That is perfect. That's fine with me. Now that we have the flag pole and flag animation in place and exactly where I want it, the next thing to do is I'm going to add an image to the flag. So I'm going to select the flag. I'm going to go into render mode by just clicking this button here. I'm going to increase the size of the shadow catcher. And if your plane isn't a shadow catcher, all you need to do is select your plane, come over to object, scroll down to visibility and make sure shadow catcher is highlighted. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this. I'm going to add a new material in my shader editor. So I'm in shader editor. I'm going to add a new material. I'm going to select principal BSDF and making sure you have Node Wrangler installed. If you don't go over to edit preferences, type in Node Wrangler and install the plugin. I'm going to press control T. Perfect. And I'm going to add an image texture to it. Perfect. And the reason why you're seeing it lined up is because I done the UV editing before, but what you need to do is go into UV editing, select everything, click on UV and just select unwrap. 
come over to here, press A to select everything. I'm gonna press R and hold control and I'm gonna move it. I'm gonna rotate it to about 90 degrees. I'm gonna move this in the middle like so. I'm gonna press S to scale and I'm just gonna scale it up so vertically. It doesn't have to fit properly. Just make sure that the text is covered and it's rotated the wrong way. Yeah, and I'm just gonna scale it up just a tiny bit more. Perfect, that's perfect. Go back into layout. I'm gonna change repeat to clip and we now have the image on the flag animation. And lastly, to make it look like it's fitting within the scene, all we have to do is just add an HDRI. I've actually got a free plugin called Polyhaven, which has a bunch of HDRIs already within it. So I'm gonna use the Polyhaven plugin. So I'm gonna go over to HDRIs, Outdoor, Skies, Sunset, and I'm just gonna click and drag this sunset over here and I think it's just a bit too strong so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold shift and I'm just going to decrease the strength a bit and of course if you don't have polyhaven and you want to add an HDRI all you need to do is go over to the world tab click on new then come over to color click on color select environment texture once you've done that, click on open and navigate to where you have your HDRIs installed. And if you're having issues with rendering, this is the compositing layout that I have right now. So if you have any issues, just take a snapshot of this. If you want the project file for this, click the link below. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Drop a comment below for what videos you'd like to see next. My name is Jermaine and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Goodbye.